My name is Keith Smokey Johnson, and for those who are new to the show, uh, the Emoji Circle is an African Senate talk show where we correct errors where errors are found, and we introduce facts where we find that so many people are working on fiction when it comes to who we are as people of African descent. Um, I've been doing this show for oh, about 28 years soon this year, it's going to be a total of 28 years, and I continually talk about our issues. But I use history in order to um, get things straight, put things in the right and proper context. Um, I know I, I want to address something that I'm, I'm sure many of you are, are um, dealing with in your own way when you see what's going on with these white nationalists or these white supremacists and some of the comments they're making about you know bringing back uh, certain things that we thought we left behind uh, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, when, when, when the, uh, before the 1964 Civil Rights Act and certain laws were passed. Uh, and I, I, I want people to understand that what you're hearing in the news media, especially on news media like uh, Newsmax or uh, Fox News, those type of rhetoric that might make you feel uncomfortable, or you might think that we've uh, thought that we've come a long way since those days of our uh, uh, parents or my generation, the baby boomers, who were young men and women uh, during the, the 60s, uh, that those days are over. Uh, but that monster that is called racism is what I'm going to talk about in the history of, of racism. Um, when you hear things like um, how they misinterpret uh, the concept and theories that was created by a black uh, professor at uh, Harvard, C uh, CRT, critical race theories, with, and somehow it's uh, being taught in uh, uh, first to 12th grade, no, which is a lie, uh, and also the banning of books by DeSantis in Florida, and all these other things that, de and, and banning books that predominantly uh, black history books like this one here, 1619 uh, in Florida. It's been it was banned. Uh, which you know, please, this is this is this is not going to be happening. You can see I proudly uh, have this displayed on 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 the on my uh, desk here, and and other books that needs to to be read. We must we need to read in order to understand uh, the present moment. Um, and today in the media, you're hearing whether it's liberal media or conservative media, how we become a, how we become a divided country. But I'm here to tell you that America, from its founding, and I'm not talking just in 1789. I'm talking about going back to colonial times, uh, has always been divided. Okay, and it's always been this concept of race. Race has always been part of everything that's foundational in America. Okay, when you have hundreds of years of enslaving people that look like me, there's going to be certain types of ideas that you're going to have to have to justify the <clears throat> inhuman things that you had to do to maintain a free working uh, uh, population. And it doesn't go with the founding mythology of this is the land of the free, or this is the land of liberty, okay? It's a constant contradiction. And the rhetoric and mythology, let's make America great again, is something that we are hearing a lot in today's media. But if you don't understand the history behind it, the history of racism in America, the history of the things that... Um, are producing the results that we see today, then um, that's why you need to read books like 1619. Or you got, you're going to read, read these other books that deals with the issues that um, created this American experiment, okay, this so-called democracy. Uh, the words of, 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 of Jefferson uh, that he wrote in uh, 1776 at the convention uh, in, in the Declaration of Independence, those words are pretty, 
but they still have yet to be fulfilled, okay? And that's what we must understand. And this process, it hasn't been established yet. Oh, it might have been attempted and established for white people. The coin of America has always been the white skin on, 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 on the body. I, I, it sounds r harsh, but it's the truth. The thing that made America America was this concept, this concept of whiteness that established and started in the 1600s. People don't realize that before the 1600s, uh, when the laws were, were established, you will um, find that most Europeans fought against each other. If you understand the history of Europe, and people th tend to think that the dark continent of Africa, where our ancestors came from, is violent. Well, look at the history of Europe for the past thousand of 2,000 years. It has nothing but been a violent. You know, the English fought the Dutch, the Dutch fought the French, the French fought the, the English fought the Irish and the Scottish, and these people were also separated by, by their cultural differences or their language differences. So this concept that we are shocked today that this country is a divided country, when the laws and the customs were built around division. First, first of all, enslavement. That divided one group of people. First of all, the land that was taken from Nat Native Americans. That established a, 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 a divided. So I want to say that to understand the present moment, you must understand the past. Uh, I got I got uh, let me, well, since we're talking about the present moment, <clears throat> let me check out this 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 uh, concept. You see on the uh, on the screen, you see the word present, P R E S E N T, moment. You're thinking about the now, but if you take that P R E and separate it from the the S E N T moment, <clears throat> you get the present moment. And that's, I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. The present moment means that something in the past was given to you as a present in the pre in, in, in now, in the holy moment of now, as I call it. You, everything that's happening to you now was based on a decision or a law that was made in the past. So if you try to take away people's knowledge of the past, you won't understand the situation that's going on in the, in the present moment. Why it's happening. Why there is a wealth gap. Why is there a health gap. Why, why is there this, this, this issue of how white people think versus how black people think? Why there's a <clears throat> difference in which how b black Americans look at b the, the criminal justice system or police officers? There is a history. <clears throat> it, and if you don't understand, to understand the present, you must understand the present moment, what was sent to us right now. That's important. Let's go on to a, another screen that uh, I want you. And I, 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 this is a quote that I got from um, a great black uh, psychologist, uh, uh, Stanford Train, but he's, he's very African in his, in his thinking. He said, the actions of a founding people become the experience of that generation, the founding generation, and the experience of that founding generation then become the history of the next generation, while the history of the many generations which follows afterwards then become the tradition of that people. So if you want to understand racism, and why we're dealing with racism today, you got to understand what happened in the founding generation. Why do we have? You can't disconnect from that. So whatever DeSantis is doing in Florida is a disservice to all the humans there because that's not how it works. You got to understand the, the precedent, what came before in order to understand the present. And he's doing a disservice and he's doing it deliberately because amnesiac don't make good citizens. Okay, if you can't, you'll be confused of what's going on and you'll be easily manipulated if you do not understand the issue. Let's go on to the next uh, image there. And as human beings, we all tri transmit our minds culturally the same way that we transmit our genetics information biologically. We're passed down. We are accumulation in this body. I'm the, 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 uh, the totality of all my ancestors, my mother and father, my grandparents, my, my great-grandparents. All of them donated their genetic 
makeup to make me. In fact, every gene in my body, there's trillions of cells, all the genes of my body, they donated. So literally, I walk with my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my great-great-grandparents, going back hundreds or thousands of years right now, the holy moment of now. I am the totality of that. And also mentally, all the traditions that we passed down from our grandparents and they got from their parents and so on and so forth. So the past is never away from us. It's always with us now in the present moment. Let's go on. We must look at the, at the historical relationship between our black communities and the dominant white communities for over 400, the past 400 years through the lens and framework of the system of institutionalized racism. Okay, let's go on. But just like an old house, when you move into an old house, America's social house now has unseen issues with its foundational structure which has now warped into a current multi-layered racial caste system we call racism today. If you go into a house, an old house, a 200-year-old house up in New England, you're just not going to move in with your furniture. You're going to have to do some work. So any of you people out there who are saying, I didn't, I didn't own slaves 600 or 200 years ago, or my parents didn't do this, or what? why do I have to do things today and understand and make the changes that are necessary? Why I want to I must uh, uh, keep the old system? Well, do you keep the old foundation in an old house? If you moved in, first thing you do is try to shore up and change those things that it needs to do. America is an old structure and the structure was built on racist ideas. And if you don't think in the present moment that we need to change some of those things and upgrade them to fit the population of America, then you're sadly mistaken. Let's go on to the next uh, one. This is what the foundation of America was created on, whether you like it or not. It was built on a caste system, okay? And the caste system put white people on the top of the, just like in India, you have the caste and the white America based on laws. And if you read all those things about caste and racism, when you say to a black person or uh, uh, you, you, are, you are a racist, a black person cannot be a racist. Let's go on. I, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? An American caste system that most Americans don't even want to face has been essential to this political structure we call America, okay? Whites has always been on top, segregation, enslavement, okay? Where has been, even if you're on the lower end of the social economic <clears throat> structure of America, in other words, a poor white, you were still conditioned to believe you had it better than a black person, segregation or enslavement, okay? And you had to have the type of information to uh, justify that. That's the educational system, okay? It always showed that your coin in this system was your white skin. I hate to tell you that. That's why we have issues today. The present and the past are always connected. <clears throat> this, this, this caste structure down the bottom, second paragraph was created by the early colonial laws of this land, That's like I said, which have now become an unconscious code of instructions that has maintained a 400-year-old hierarchical social order. When you think these Karens out there asking black people where they're going, there were, there were slave codes in the 1600s, in the 1700s, in the 1800s, <clears throat> that tell you that w you had the right to ask a black person what you're doing, where you're going, and what you're doing in this neighborhood. You don't think that's cultural? You don't think that that, that, that kind of caste system, you don't call it a caste system, you're born into it, but don't think it. That's why we have issues. This old house was built on that structure. We need to change it. Let's go on, okay? It's an artificial construction. Okay, white skin doesn't make you superior. We're all human beings. I did a show a bunch, uh, a couple of uh, months ago, talking about one race, the human race. And this is what we're talking about. Books like 1619 was going to tell you. You could go into deeper details, uh, like I'm talking about, if you want to know these little uh, nuggets that I am um, showing you here. Let's go on to the next one. 
let's go on. We, 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 okay. <clears throat> That's why today, as Americans, we are called to examine and update a political structure built long ago. In po politics, these types of individuals are known in politics as 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 progressive. Those are the ones that are called the snowflakes by the conservative party because they they're the ones who want to fix the house. You know, that's what I'm about. I want to progress in the sense to change the laws that were established 200 years ago in this structure called America that was benefit to white Americans. Whether you like it or not, you could be a good uh, 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 person, but if you don't understand the, the history and understand the architecture of the structure we call America, it is not the land of the free, the home, the brave for every American yet. We've still got a long way to go, and we still must build together. That's what this is about, you know? Okay, just like it said, you know, American political house has unseen issues with its skeletal structure, racist caste system. That's And white Americans have the privilege to ignore it. If you're the dominant group in that system, you have the privilege. That's what privilege, white privilege means, to ignore it because the system, whether you like it or not, works better for you I'm saying I know there's individual issues, but it works better for you than somebody to look like me. I could have a, a, a multiple degrees, but I'm but when, if I'm in my everyday clothes, I could still look like one of the uh, you know any black person on this uh, in this country and still be treated as a second class citizen. This is the way it has been for hundreds of years in America, and we must change it. Let's let's go on to the next one. It's like he said, you cannot fix a problem unless you can see it. And history puts a light to the past so that you can understand the darkness or the confusion in the present. Let's go on. <clears throat> and that's again, we're, 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 told, we're told today as Americans, we are, are called to examine and update a political structure built long ago. Let's, let's go on to the next one. But again, the, the, the $100,000 question, what is racism? Racism came into being by laws that were created at the founding of this country, like I said earlier. America, okay, it ain't England, they have their issues, it ain't France, and we're talking about this country, America. Okay, the so-called exceptional America, or make America great again, when would this again, when would this place ever great like the uh, the MAGA Republicans are sprouting out. Was it in the, in the eight, 1950s, 1920s, 2000? Okay, and, 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 and racism creating a power relationship between one group of people, white America, over another group of people, black America, in this society, based solely on the color of our skin, okay? Constitution we here talked about by conservatives. Conservatives want to maintain the status quo. Why would you want to maintain a status quo that was built on racist ideology? And let me explain about racism. Or oh, let me do a little grammar. This is nothing um, has nothing to do with coming from me. I'm just basic grammar. When you see a word with ISM at it, like capitalism or socialism or racism in grammar, ism tells you that that word has dual meanings. The first aspect of the ism word that's connected to ism, like capitalism, is an ideology, a way people think, okay? Racism was the way people think. It had nothing to do with prejudice, all right? It's a way you were taught in school. And if you're the dominant group, um, white, and I'm not being racist when I call you white, I'm just being descriptive of how your answer to define yourself, to separate yourself in this caste system. This is history. I'm sorry. Until you face this truth, then, then you could, we could be able to fix it, okay? Fix the house, the unseen foundation that we need to fix. The, 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 the um, racism, the ideology, and then the second aspect of an ism is the system. So and anything with ism, there is a 
ideology, there's a capitalist ideology, capitalism ideology, but there's a capitalist system, there's capitalist societies. You know, the political, the economic, the judicial, they're all based on capitalism. Same thing with socialism. Socialist ideology versus racism, R-A-C-E, race is embedded into the word, racism. So it's not an individual thing, it's a system. That's where we say systematic racism. It's a system. So black people cannot be racist because where did we run the system in the last 400 years of our existence in this land? Let's go on. Okay, uh, and, and just like I just said, this, this meant that for over 400 years, one group of people in the society, white America, had control of so much wealth, power, and resources that they could and did deprive, hurt, injure, and hinder another group, black America, ability to, to benefit from the society. How can we benefit from this society, even though DeSantis said that we learned some, some skills in a si society that could, this book here that I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's on my desk, right here, this shows, this is a book about um, uh, where they would uh, raise babies, okay, along the East Coast, in Virginia, outside of Richmond, and uh, the, the Eastern Shores of Virginia, okay, the Slave Coast, as it was called. It, it, you know, just like they breeding horses, they were breeding black babies to sell, okay? So let's, let's you know, you don't think that kind of hurt you know, talking about uh, the, the issues about women and, and taking away their, their, their medical rights today. What do you think about those black women who were forced to have babies to the term that when they were raped by their, their, their slaveholders who owned them, just like a, a Kentucky horse thoroughbred or was, uh, and, and a mare? That's how black women were treated in during this period of time. We must face this truth, folks. Let's go on. Never in the history, again, never in the history of America has black people ever had that kind of power. So how can we be racist? Now, we could be prejudiced, but racist? That's just some of the uh, cognitive dissonance, and I'll talk about that later, uh, that mental state in denial. Okay, let's go on to the next one. At the end of the Civil War, black people were only given non-economic freedom we're still left penniless and impoverished. Uh, we're, uh, we are still left today. <clears throat> we are at the bottom. The, the wealth gap is so big because when we started out in 1865, uh, without, we weren't given no economic relief. We were just told we were free, okay? Just like playing Monopoly, where you get $1,500 in Monopoly, if anybody had played it, where you get $1,500, but it's like giving Everybody on the table got $1,500, but black people barely got $10. How could you play the economic monopoly that is this capitalist system when we started out with behind, generational, where you had hundreds of years of generational wealth? That's why the wealth gap is the way it is today. Until we understand the history, we won't understand the present moment. This was sent to us by those type of decisions that were made by your ancestors and our ancestors had to deal with it. But I want to let you talk to, listen to a video clip that I have of um, uh, Brother Martin Luther King. This is 1967 and he's talking about that dream that he had uh, in, in front of the Lincoln Memorial. He had a different opinion in 1967. Let's go to that. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has at many points turned into a nightmare. Now, I'm not one to lose hope. I keep on hoping. Uh, I still have faith in the future. But I've had to analyze many things over the last few years, and I would say over the last few months. I've gone through a lot of soul-searching and agonizing moments, and I've come to see that uh, we have uh, many more difficult days ahead, and some of the old optimism was a little superficial, and now it must be tempered with a solid realism. And I think the realistic fact is that we still have a long, long way to go 
Okay, now that you heard the man, okay, this I have a dream that somehow, now that you heard that video, you see a different type of Martin Luther King than the I have a dream that a lot of white politicians and white people who don't give a dang about Martin Luther King, but on in January during his birthday in a speech, they talk about the I have a dream. First of all, <clears throat> that was never the name of of of, of the of the uh, uh, of the speech. That I have a dream portion with the ad lib that he did when Mahalia Jackson, who he kind of uh, he, he he comforted her. He was a fan of hers, and he loved her singing because he was under such pressure <clears throat> from the time he took um, control uh, of the Christian uh, of the organization, and the, he was he was the voice and the uh, and the uh, the, the so called head of uh, black people at the time. He had the phone number to to when he won the Nobel Prize and all those things. He had the, uh, the numbers to the president of the United States, but the pressure that was on him, and she calmed him. And during that speech, people don't know, he uh, kind of froze for a little bit, and and he and and he had a uh, he already had this speech written out, uh, but he kind of froze. And Mahalia said, "Remember the dream speech." That he had did a couple of months ago in another uh, in another uh, stop that they made in the South, and that's where that I have a dream uh, uh, part came in. We got to understand the, the the truth of this history. Uh, you, you hear what he's saying in 1967 that he questioned that naivete of I had a dream, and everybody would want him to go down that path, but he saw that with all the riots, and we'll talk about those riots during those that period of time. But I also want to talk, I'm going to lead up in the next show about all those things that reinforce this division. It was not something that just happened today. We're going to talk about that. America has always been split. America has always been divided. And it hasn't been by black folks. <clears throat> we are not we we the be, we are not racist. The best we can be, if you t want to talk about people in the history, you want to bring up is reactionary. When you see um, uh, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan speak, and he says what he says, or Al Sharpton, or all the other scholars, Frederick Douglass, talk about America and what's needed. <clears throat> Martin Luther King, when he was talking about. Um, uh, the, the in in the speech with which we falsely collect, call the I have a dream speech that's not the title again let me emphasize it but until, I'm gonna wait until the beginning of the next show okay to to continue the discussion I hope I at least open your eyes to this issue that we have to have we ain't there yet don't fool yourself and unless you participate in the healing of America, unless white America participates in, in that healing also, anything that's done in the interim is going to be temporary, as we can see in this past hundred years uh, of the of the 20, 19th hundreds and uh, the, the 21st century. So until next time, peace, hotep, bye-bye.